Charlton and Barrack Street in Lower Manhattan. This is just like the working man's uh, Times Square TV studio situation. This is what our sustaining members have brought us, ladies and gentlemen. Vast panes of glass. Oh, do we have some sustaining members? Oh, nice. Three. That's good. Well, maybe we'll get some more. My name is Julian Fleischer. I am your host. I hope always to be your host. Our job here every year is to remind ourselves, both you and me and, and these handsome gentlemen right here and uh, the people backstage, just why we suffer through the days and nights here in New York City. Let's admit it, it's not easy, is it? You gotta wake up, you gotta pay 20 bucks just to walk out of your house. You need a machete to get up through the L train, am I right? But there's a reason why, and we're gonna tell you again tonight what that is. It's the restless, creative spirit of New York City. There is none other like it. The original sanctuary city. New York City is the AP city, is it not? This is not for those kids in the 101 classes. This is a 400 level seminar, ladies and gentlemen. It's life in New York. Now let me just take a quick survey here. Uh, do we have any Jews in the house? I just need to know where they are. There we go, it is New York. Well, Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Lashana Tova to my Jewish friends in the audience. To those of you who are not Jews, your honorary Jews tonight, I know how good that must make you feel. The New Year is just one of many themes we're gonna uh, be exploring this evening on 44 Charlton. Another one, of course, is back to school and those cool winter autumn breezes that are starting to blow down the avenues. Do you feel them? Have you felt them? I felt one yesterday, I think. And it almost ripped my heart right out of my chest. Do you know what I'm talking about, that yearning? Am I talking? Yes, no. Do we have any people from Brooklyn? Brooklyn, yes. Good, good. How about Queens? I keep looking. One, two, two, all right. Going down from there, how about the Bronx? Oh, Queen, okay, three. Bronx, Staten Island, shit. We really have got some work to do upstairs in marketing. We gotta get the word out to Staten Island. They need us the most, do they not? They're the ones in most need of the succor that only WNYC and WQXR can bring to the people, ladies and gentlemen. Let me stop talking because we have an extraordinary show lined up for you. I really cannot say enough about the talent lineup we have. We have not just a green room, but a hallway and a bike room full of talent. They're all back there waiting to come on stage. So I encourage you to clap loudly, sing along when asked to, play along and so forth. But most of all, be here now with us. The words are ba di -ya. Okay? It goes like this. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Say do you remember?
Antonio and Stein. That's Leon Boykins. Ben Aaron. The beautiful 44 char tones. Cody, I know you don't like to talk while you play, so I thought I might just wait till the song was over. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. How you doing, man? Good, good. You have a good summer? Uh, did I have a good summer? <laughs> I can't wow. remember, I so it must I have been I did not excellent. mean yeah. that to get <laughs> quite that deep. It was that just, was no, I actually wanted to answer your question, and I can't recall. So, yes, the answer is great. It's great. How about you? You lost some weight. Did, <laughs> you did, did I? As if that were possible. Oh, I, I, you skinny little ding-dong. I've been, uh, you know, working out. I, I don't know. I don't know. What have you been doing? What do you actually do with your time, Cody? It's really unclear. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? Well, regardless, I'm happy to see you here. Thank you. And for bringing these uh, handsome fellows back with you. How are you, my three-quarter Jewish friend? Huh? And you, have you got a surprise for us? No. That's okay. That's okay. Let's get started, shall we? Uh, our first act, ladies and gentlemen, is called Lub Dub. That's L-U-B-D-U-B. -U -U they are a New York-based hybrid physical theater company animating stories of science, magic, and myth. I've known them now for a couple of years myself. I got to spend some good times with them. They are an extraordinary group of people. I like them very much, and I think you will too. They have a beautiful fall lined up, so they're gonna give us a taste of what they've got. and. Uh, Without further ado, please put your hands together loudly and enthusiastically for Love Dub Theatre Company. Our show called The Doubtful Guest. This play is based on the tradition of American spiritualism. 150 years ago, on a night like this, we might have found ourselves in the living room of a neighbor or a stranger, but a woman who called herself a spiritualist because we were very, very curious about her claims that she could contact the dead. Now, to get us started this evening, I would like, in a moment when I ring this bell, for you to turn to someone near you, preferably someone you don't know, and answer this simple question. Do you believe in spirits? Okay, by a show of hands, who does believe in spirits? Yes, enthusiastic in front. Oh, not many of you. Interesting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And who does not believe in spirits? Uh huh. Oh dear. And who didn't raise their hand? <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Thank you.
have a microphone. Oh. You can use the microphone. Clinton, get up here. Hi. There. I'm Tessa. I'm from here, and I'm excited. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm six foot one, and I'm Clinton, and I am the most fun. <laughs> what a good seance needs. A good seance needs a. A good seance needs an introduction. You already, you already know us, so... Um, uh, guests, uh, Robert uh, and Miranda, guests, a round of applause for them. Uh, wonderful as they come. You just know... And this is Miranda. She's a playwright. A good seance needs some context. The word seance comes from the French verb to sit. It has also been translated as an encounter. The spirits would announce their arrival by the ringing of a bell. And a good seance needs a gift. You want to make a good impression. Personally, I'm a fan of flowers. If it's an after-dinner seance, a good seance needs some snacks. Chips and crackers are always good, but you definitely need cheese. <laughs> and you got to have drinks. If it's a fall seance, it's a real treat to have a nice scotch. <laughs> A good seance always needs something unexpected. Before contacting the spirits, uh, a medium would perform an act of danger. Some would <laughs> hold their breath, others would uh, put their hand directly into flames. And others, well, I need some help. Any believers over there? So there are any believers here? Ah, this sir right here. Would you step up, sir? Come. Yeah, just come. Just stand. Just right here. Right here. Perfect. <laughs> You've been outed. He was outed as a believer. It's good. Uh, would you um, just be so kind as to pick a nail? And just have a look, make sure it's pointy at the end, doesn't bend. Is it a good nail? Best I see. Best you see. <laughs> Could you uh, take this hammer, make sure it's a, a nice sturdy hammer? Is that a good hammer? <laughs> yep. Yes. Thank you. The Love Dub Theater Company, ladies and gentlemen. Mixing magic, music, mayhem. Come over here, kids. Join your Uncle Julian on the stage of the Chamber of Chat. Welcome. We have a big seat here. We have this fella here who's going to join us. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Come on. Come on up here. Which one of you still has a, a, has a uh, handheld microphone to play with? Either of you? Any of you? Oh, someone, someone will bring it to you. <coughs> Look at that. Hello. Hi there. What's your name? My name is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How, how are you, Jeff? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, I love watching you hammer that nail into your face. I must have seen you do that a dozen times now, and it never gets old. No, it's not a nail all the time. Sometimes a golf tee. Sometimes a balloon right through. 
The very talented oh. left nostril, right one, can't do anything but sneeze. Oh my god, that's interesting. So do you love this one a lot more? Do you love dub it? I, I love them equally. I love it. That reminds me, tell me about the name Love Dub. And can I get you a drink? Uh, yeah. Who wants a drink? I think yeah. Clinton. Clinton, you do? I know you do. So Love Dub uh, is the sound a heart makes. Um, Caitlin Cassidy and myself uh, founded the company. Uh, along with these other individuals. Actually, why don't we pass around, just say our names? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah why not? Caitlin, don't Hi let guys, Jeff Mann I'm explain Caitlin. this are, whole thing. I know, listen. I want you to take command. <laughs> Here you go, Clinton. Drink up. Clinton. Share with your friends. Yes, you're Clinton. Yep. Say your there name. we are. Cheers. I'm Caitlin. Hi, Hi guys. Caitlin. How hey are guys. you? Hey, guys. Good. You look so pretty. I feel Thank like you no for one coming. Can... Hi, back there. I know. I know. It's a little, we got our levels line, wrong. But, you know, don't worry. They can see on the monitors. Oh, see, that's there right. We are. That's right. Okay. Look at, we're like one big, weird, happy family. Hey, guys. It's like the WNYC <laughs> Munsters or something, right? And you're Marilyn. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? I like that. Thank you Thank for you getting for that, that reference. Yes. Oh, it's true. It's true. You guys can duke it out. What's your name, young man? I'm Clinton. Hi, Clinton. And I'm the most fun. You are. You're Jeff. And who's this fella? I am Richard. I am an honorary member for tonight. Oh, and yay. This, and the sideshow affectionado. Very good. Thank you. That's very good. Richard, can you poke something in, your, in, in a hole for us? I guess not. All right. <laughs> what about this pretty I'm lady? Tessa. Hi, Tessa. And in the back? Oh, no, there you are. Robert, you're hi. I'm Robert. Hi there, Robert. Hi, Julie. How are you? And I'm Miranda. Hi, Miranda. <laughs> Let's not be coy, Miranda. You and I know each other th through other uh, uh, channels. Is that right? That's true. You want to tell the audience how we know each other? Go ahead. We're both from the wonderful city of Baltimore, Maryland. That's right. That's right. We Which we like to pronounce Baltimore, Maryland <laughs> for any locals in the house. That's right, Horn. I can do a really good Hebrew with my Baltimore accent. They've seen how to roll. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> See, Julian um, attended the synagogue across the street from the house that I grew up in, down in Baltimore, Maryland. That's right. That's right. There aren't a lot of other Jews I know who grew up in that particular neighborhood, at least when I did. Now they're a dime a dozen, but back then, we weren't so common, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> what? And your dad and my dad are friends. Yeah, my dad has interviewed Julian and his dad on the radio. That's so right. it's only so fitting that we should be here, here we tonight. Are. We are some tough mofos from Baltimore. That's right. We will cut you as soon as look at you. <laughs> and you've got a special project coming up I'd like to tell the audience a little bit about. Sure. You are a playwright in your own right when you're not I hanging am. out with these weirdos, right? I am. And your play is about to open where? At LCT3 at the Lincoln Center. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Miranda, Baltimore. <Yeah. clears throat> How are ticket sales? Uh, they begin tomorrow. Tomorrow morning <laughs> for those who subscribe to Link Ticks. And, um, Do we have any Link Ticksers in here? Go I ahead and grab your tickets for <laughs> plot points in our sexual development. Which is, is that what it's called? That's what plot it's called. Plot points in our sexual development. Oh, that sounds like That's a play right. for me. It's a play for you. Yeah. It's a gift play for you, Julian. This show is generally a plot point in my sexual development <laughs> every month. Yeah, I try anyway. It's good to keep it going. Well, Mazel Tov, your parents must be very proud. Thank a play you. at Lincoln Center is a very big deal, and I'm yes. sure it's the first of many. I know you, and I know how brilliant you are, so I'm excited for you. Oh, I know this you. is just the beginning. And what's up for Love Dub next? Jeff, do you want to handle this? Yeah, I'll handle this. Uh, so one of the things that's very exciting is we have some um, happenings that will be popping up. The best place to find those is to subscribe to our newsletter. I think there's information up on uh, the monitor right over there. Is there? Have we done yeah. our jobs? I can't see. Oh, there it you is. You guys yes. are on it. You guys oh, are rocking. Oh, and look, we did this. like this a, 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 a camera and our producer made like a blackboard for the black back to school. Back to school. Back to sure. school. Yeah. So um, hop on there and subscribe, and then you'll be the first to know about other kind of pop-up events and um, some other stuff that's in development. Too. A happening. I like that. That yeah. was like a, a Barbra Streisand word, right? Remember a happening in Central Park? I think that was the first time we ever heard that word used. Oh, this is right. Well, 60s, 70s, before then. I feel like people were doing that. There were happenings before Barbara's? No, there weren't. In living rooms. Well, no. There, there, there's like... <laughs> There's BB and AB, and as far as I'm concerned, we're all AB now, right? Um, uh, all right, so we will get everybody on the mailing list. There's lots more to see and to experience in the warm embrace of the beautiful Love Dub Theater Company. I'm so glad you guys joined us, and you too, you fellow honorary uh, dude down there. Um, 
So we're going to keep moving, but I want you guys to stick around for the uh, big sing-along at the end of the show. Will you Absolutely. do that? Absolutely. Is there anything else I need to say that we need to plug? What? Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. Thank you for reminding me. I want you to do more magic. More magic? Right now. Right now. Right now. Make magic happen. Okay. Do you need a volunteer? I think this happened naturally, yeah. and it feels <laughs> right. So ah. I think that you are you're you're seated here, and it's absolutely perfect. His um, angle is all good; like he can see up your sleeves and stuff. Yeah, that's good. That's even better. Ooh. I like the challenge. Yeah, um, I think the story goes back to um, I first. So Love Dub is a interdisciplinary. We we mix magic and dancers and playwrights and dramaturgs and and music, and we try to mush this all together, uh, and we find that really exciting. Uh, but I uh, am a magician as well. So I first fell in love with magic because of playing cards. I love playing games uh, and shuffling the cards themselves. Uh, do you, Robert? Thank you. Oh. Uh, so we have cards. Leave it um, to the dramaturg. He's on top of the storyline. Yeah. This is going to be, could you hold the mic for me as sure. I, this is, yeah, this is great. Wonderful. You're beautiful. Um, so I'm going to have you choose a card in a moment. But first, I wanted to talk about one of the things I love about playing cards. Playing cards were first created as a portable calendar. So there are four different suits, four different seasons, two hot, two cold, two red, two black. There are 13 cards uh, to a suit, 13 phases of the moon, 52 cards in a deck of cards, 52 weeks in the year. And if you add all the values together, uh, jacks being 11, queens 12, kings 13, it totals to 365 days in a year. Are you making this up? Yeah. Because I feel like we couldn't, I, I don't have time to check you. And <laughs> it's beautiful. This sounds like bullshit, right, everybody? So. Okay, sorry, go on. So um, it's, a, it's a very special thing. And, and so I started learning sleight of hand and how, how, to, how to shuffle cards so you can move a card from one position um, to the other. But I saw a magician do something with only one card. And with one card, you can't be like mixing around and it just it kind of stays hidden. So would you be so kind? You're going to, um, uh, any card you want, um, we're all going to see it. Uh, perfect. Do you want the four? Perfect. And uh, do you have a pen? Too? Thank you. Would oh. you sign your name on the card? This was the first thing that like, I was like, wait. What you have you to hold the mic yeah. for him. <laughs> oh, this is good. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> yeah, just sign nice so we can see it. Beautiful, excellent job, Rich. Yeah. What uh, did you sign? Let's show that. Abraham Lincoln. It's elegant. But he only used uh, one card, like I said. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> this is physical theater, everyone. Oh, yeah, I like it. Uh, so the first thing you're not supposed to do is sign a card. It marks it. It, it kind of ruins the card. It's hard to play games because uh, this is now marked. But uh, the next thing he did was an absolute faux pas. Light of hand. And, uh, it was ruined. Uh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said some magic words. I don't remember what they were, but I remember. Completely oh, restored. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> Love Dub Theater Company, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Give me a hug. Thank you all so much. Oh, you can just take that with you if you want. No, I don't want the cheese. Thank you. I mean, don't get me wrong, I want the cheese. No, I'm fine. Thank you. You guys are the best. Have a seat. Yeah, look, I'm gonna come over there and sit next to you, darn it. This is better, right? You're really having the full experience. It's almost like it's really happening. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, a lovely comedian, Becca, Rebecca O'Neill, is a Brooklyn-based uh, stand-up comedian by way of Chicago. How about that? Do we have any applause for the Windy City? Oops, sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> 
Uh, her writing has appeared in Vanity Fair, in Vulture, The Frisky, and many others. As a comedian, she's open for the likes of Hannibal Burris, Cameron Esposito, and a name I simply cannot read because my producer's handwriting is uh, inscrutable. It looks like Sarheer Zamata. Thank you so much. Say it again. That's who she's appeared with. And she's now on the show, the After After Party. Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca O'Neill. Hello. Who knew how to pronounce Sashir's name? Ooh, look at this hero. Clap it up for this hero right here. A fan of comedy or a fan of Sashir? Because she's hot, right? She's hot. Okay, she's on SNL. Okay, I'm Rebecca O'Neill, you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is my name. I'm Rebecca O'Neill. Y'all probably thought I was going to be white based on that name, but I'm not. I'm black. Uh, yeah, I have the name of a step dancer in a St. Patrick's Day parade, but <laughs> I look like I live in Wakanda. I love it. It's great because uh, it confuses people. I, I am new here. I've been in Brooklyn. Actually, not new anymore. I've been here for almost a year next month. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's good. It's good. I moved here from the murder capital. You know, it's cool. Uh, and I'm like, okay, yeah, Chicago's the murder capital. She looked like, do they murder in Chicago? Girl, yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> they be murdering. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm here in lovely Bro in, in New York. Uh, I love it. My only gripe, and I, I, you got to have a gripe at a comedy show. Uh, there's, a, there's a thing that, that you have here that I love. It's bodegas. We, we don't have this exact thing in Chicago. Fans, who, who's wooing for bodegas? Are you hungry? What's good? Uh, <laughs> I love it because we don't have this exact thing in Chicago. We have corner stores and we have delis but they are two separate commercial enterprises, okay? Not a lot of overlap. Here in, in, in New York, you can get the kind of stuff I like at a corner store. You can get, you know, a cool beverage, uh, a warm orange, stuff like that. You know, just like <laughs> room temperature citrus. Gotta love it. Uh, <laughs> but the difference is here in your corner stores, there's people cooking in the kitchen, which I find quaint and a little unsanitary, but nobody asked me. So uh, you guys were doing this long before I arrived, so as you are. Uh, <laughs> But, and, and my gripe is, my, you gotta have a gripe. My gripe is, why do the bodega dudes ask what you want on your sandwich if they're gonna do whatever the hell they feel anyway? Like, that just, <laughs> that reads disingenuous to me. I don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Being from the murder capital, that's phony. You know, just be real going forward. Call yourself a tastemaker or a concierge or something like that, because they're clearly eyeballing it and giving me what they feel I deserve. And I'm like, okay, I'll be your muse and not your customer, but say that, you know what I mean? Say that up front. <laughs> This is a fat gripe, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I like it here. I got catcalled in Brooklyn because it's Brooklyn. And uh, the guy yelled something. You know how guys are. Uh, he's like, hey, colorful. Hey, rainbow. And I'm like, that's got to be me. Today, I did a, a muted palette because this place is nice. And I'm used to performing at like DIY shows for college kids in Brooklyn. So I feel wonderful right now. Uh, so I'm like, put on a brocade dress. Look like the mother of, of the bride. Uh, I. <laughs> I, I love it. Here's the thing. Usually, you guys are going to have to use the power of imagination. I, I like to power pattern mix. I, my style icon is Fran Drescher from The Nanny. So, you know, extrapolate <laughs> back from there. Like, for example, our wonderful host outfit. I'm like, how could I turn that into a dress? Like, that's what I'm, that's the energy I'm trying to. My, my, my whole thing is like, what if Miss Frizzle was a slut? Like, that's, <laughs> that's the energy. That's the energy. Because everybody in New York kind of dresses like I'm dressed right, right now, like all black everything, you know? Like everyone's going to like a chic destination funeral, like that sort of thing. <laughs> it's not my vibe, you know? I, it's not me. I, I dress like a background dancer in a body positive hip hop video. Like I'm just gonna twerk so hard, you realize all women are beautiful, whatever. Uh, yeah. I recently got back into town. I went to Portland. I hadn't been there before. It's be anybody been to Portland before? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's very green there. It's green. It's almost as green as it is white. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's refreshing though, because here in Brooklyn, in New York, this just, you know, we don't have as much nature. There's more like designated areas where politicians allow trees to grow. It's not the same. You know, it's just not the same. It's not the same at all. It's just in all the available oxygen. I felt like I was blood doping just being in Oregon, just. I feel like I'd get kicked out of the Olympics for being there for too long. It's just so much oxygen in my blood. Because whereas in New York, the air is like a little thick. It doesn't move. It smells funny. Like, I don't know. I've only been here for a year. I'm not ready. Uh, I just feel like New York has that total recall air that'll make you grow a third titty. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. 
Somebody do the tests. I'm not, not a scientist. Uh, <laughs> I went through a breakup before I moved here because I'm like, uh, I was dating a 23-year-old. Somebody gasped. How do you know I'm not 23? Stop it. Uh, I'm not 23, significantly. But he had a lot of energy. A bitch has her reasons. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. But I told him, I'm like, I'm moving across the country. You know, I'm moving millions of miles away from Chicago. I have no sense of geography, probably trillions. And, uh, you know, no sense of spatial reasoning. But I'm like, I'm moving across the country. We should go our separate ways. We should move on. And then he did immediately. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Because I said that to be nice. So uh, here's the thing, he's 23, right? The funny part is I was calling this little rug rat daddy in bed, which like, I'm like, okay, girl, you're into some Benjamin Button shit. That's fine, that's okay. Put it on your fat life, let the people know what you like. Uh, it's weird, I'm a feminist. Anybody else a feminist? Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, here's the thing, I, I am a feminist, but in the context of a relationship with the man, uh, it's sort of, in, in, in contrast to that, I get pretty submissive and I like a man who's dominant. I never fight what I like. It's just, it's really, it's mind boggling to be a feminist whose fetish is technically a Republican household. Like that is wild, you know what I mean? <laughs> Cause I find myself like, can you get whiplash from cognitive dissonance? Cause there's a lot, uh, it's a lot going on in my brain. <laughs> I'm not gonna get too dirty with you. You guys like dirty jokes? Mm. Hilarious, cause I like being woke and nasty cause it confuses men and that's my brand, I don't know. I just wanna be like the Andy Kaufman of sluts. You guys ready? Like Schrodinger's pussy, is it there? I'm not sure, I don't know. Was she really a slut? You'll find out on my deathbed if I don't fake my death. Okay, so. I really, like, I, I try to think like, Rebecca, what are you looking for in a man? Nobody asked, but I'm gonna answer the question. Uh, I'm looking for someone who can help me get marijuana easily and <laughs> pay for my birth control. And I realize weed, birth control. Bitch, you wanna date Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. That's who you wanna date. You wanna date Bernie Sanders. <laughs> They're not available. So it's, it's really hilarious because uh, the first thing I did when I broke up with my ex, and no one has ever told a single woman to do this, but the first thing I did was I bought a bunch of cardigans. And I did this for what I feel to be a noble reason. My icon, Michelle Levon Obama, wears a lot of cardigans, okay? We don't have time, she's a goddess, she's a bad bitch, we don't deserve her, we don't have time. So, uh, <laughs> she's, a little, she's a little black girl from the south side of Chicago, just like me, okay? And she married a president, so I'm like, bitch, get you some cardigans, find you a man. Like, get your life together, girl. Marry up, marry witch, what are you doing? <laughs> like, stop this, stop the charade. Like, get your life together. So, yeah, she's, not, she's no slouch, though. Without, with or without Barack, she went to an Ivy League school. She's an incredibly impressive woman. And I feel like we grew up similarly. Uh, she grew up nerdy in the hood of Chicago. Growing up nerdy in the hood is very confusing for people. <laughs> white people. <laughs> it's just, people have a very binary black and white idea of what people can be and I feel like I confuse that. You know, and it is, it's just interesting because I moved from Chicago, a notoriously dangerous place to New York, a notoriously more dangerous place. Like there's hella Marvel fights take place here. Like what, you know what I mean? Like the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe is fighting in this city. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, um, I got, I bought some brass knuckles, okay? I'm not good at close combat. I don't know why I have these, but I bought them. Uh, but because I grew up nerdy in the hood, I do carry the brass knuckles in my NPR tote bag. So like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all things considered, I'm not that dangerous. I'm not gonna hurt you. Somebody groaned at the pun. You right, puns are stupid. You right, you right. <laughs> okay, no more puns, I promise. So. Uh, it, it's just silly, because I moved to Brooklyn. Like, I did grow up nerdy, which is, you know, I moved to Brooklyn, which is fine, and I feel like it's changed. I moved there last year, I didn't see what it used to be. Because now, I live amongst all these hipsters who self-identify as nerds to be cool. And I grew up being tormented for being a nerd, and I'm like, okay, th there's two N-words I gotta take back against the people who use them against me? Are you serious right now, Brooklyn? I gotta move, but I live in Bushwick, come check me out. <laughs> Um, I joined a gym back in Chicago because I was trying to lose a little weight to move to New York and be famous. We'll see how that works out. But uh, do you guys have Planet Fitness here in New York? Okay, cool, cool. I've been asking some pretty stupid questions about New York, I'm not gonna lie. Like, so here in New York, do you guys like convert oxygen into carbon dioxide? We do that back in Chicago. I don't, you, you guys do all the same shit. So uh, uh, I joined Planet Fitness, which is $10 a month, which is great because I'm broke and it works out. With your $10, they give you a free personal trainer. 
I did not know that personal trainers are an entire genre of man that I love. I didn't know this, okay? <laughs> Until I joined Planet Fitness. Okay, I love dominant men and personal trainers are a whole group of dudes who love boss and fat girls around. So it was like a yin and yang type symbiotic relationship. <laughs> So I joined three Planet Fitnesses, and I got three of them. Pokemon Go told me, gotta catch them all. I don't know, I do what I'm told, so. <laughs> That's so silly. Uh, yeah, I told my ex I used to be a cheerleader back in high school, and he's gross, so he got way too excited. His eyes lit up, and he's like, baby, baby, do you still have the uniform? If you still have the uniform, put it on for me. It's gonna be so great, we're gonna have so much fun. And I'm just sitting around wondering, like, why is he asking me, do I still have the uniform? At this point, we've been dating for a while. He knows I'm crazy as hell. I don't throw anything away. Of course I still have the uniform, so go get the uniform out. Um, I get it on, we'll say by the grace of God, because I was, <laughs> I was less than half the size in high school, y'all. And so I recently went to a thrift store not too far from here, got this awesome shirt. The shirt let me know that I'm currently a medium-sized man. Shit happens. So. Uh, <laughs> I get the uniform on, I can't breathe. He likes that too, but we're not gonna read into it. And um, he is so turned on by me in this little ass uniform. I'm like, okay, is my boyfriend's fetish teenage cheerleaders or big bitches squeezing into tiny clothes? Like, what does he like about this? I'm not sure, but I'm glad he's having fun. Uh, did you guys hear Planned Parenthood got like partially defunded last year? Did you guys hear about that? It's a shame, it's a real mess. So an anti-celebration of that, here is my favorite Planned Parenthood story. I have a favorite, that's the kind of life I lead, <laughs> fight me about it, okay, anyway. So if you did not know this, without an appointment, without any money, you can walk into any Planned Parenthood that you see and request free condoms and they'll give them to you. So I, 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 heard, I read this on the internet, I walked into a Planned Parenthood with all the confidence of somebody who had just learned something on the World Wide Web and I'm like, you know, condoms please. The woman goes backstage, She's not a comedian. She's not a comedian, is she? Uh, she went to the back of the Planned Parenthood. <laughs> this is what I do for a living, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> she comes out with this like super thick manila envelope. And I've never tried this before. I'm trying to be cool. Cause the last time I saw a manila envelope that thick, it was on season one of The Wire. So I'm like, be cool, be cool, be cool. <laughs> so I get home, I dump the envelope out <laughs> and there are 94 condoms. <laughs> inside of this manila envelope, which frankly, I feel is a judgment call. Like how much sex do you think I'm having, you nightmare woman? You know what I mean? Like what do you think is going on when I get home? Because 94 is an unchill amount of condoms to give somebody. If you're gonna give somebody 94 condoms, you should do it with like a little more ceremony than that. Like you should, you can't flick 94 condoms at somebody like a ninja star, that's rude. So I just, you know, because frankly, I feel like 94 condoms is an amount of condoms you bequeath upon someone from your estate, you know what I mean? Like, it's an inheritance of condoms. Like, is she just jumping in piles of condoms back there like Scrooge McDuck? What's going on at Planned Parenthood? <laughs> but you know, I got through them all, I'm a champion. That's not what the joke is about, it's not. Neither here nor there. You guys are clapping for promiscuity, I just am letting you know that. Okay, <laughs> I am trying to date in, in, in New York and it's going Weird, somebody just let out an exasperated, wise and knowing sigh. Ugh. I just said dating in New York and somebody's just, Ugh. it was like a, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here's the thing though, there's, there's beautiful people here, beautiful people, very symmetrical faces, a lot of cheekbones, just everybody looks like they're ready to be cast on the CW today and I'm not ready. So um, I keep meeting these guys who are super attractive, but like boring as white church. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Because I grew up evangelical Christian, you know what I mean? Oh, we're, we're celebrating uh, Jewish culture right now, is that correct? Yeah. My ex was Jewish. He's still Jewish. Uh, we're just not together anymore. Not the 23-year-old, another guy. Uh, I took him home over the holiday season to meet my family. Again, I was raised evangelical Christian, like, dress like a pimp on Easter, level Christianity. <laughs> So I bring this Jewish guy home and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get some jokes because my, my family's crazy. They didn't do anything insensitive and I was extremely disappointed, but <laughs> they did whisper, <laughs> they whispered the word Jewish all weekend long. Like, <laughs> like Rebecca, we know your boyfriend is Jewish and <laughs> those people have dietary restrictions. <laughs> Would it be okay if we left the bacon out on the table? 
And I'm like, did y'all just whisper the word bacon to me? <laughs> did you just whisper the word bacon as if it was the word blowjob? Like, what are you doing? So we broke up. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here in a second. I, I changed the kind of guy, like right now, I have a type. I like guys who are hot and dumb. It's a rule I have, okay? If I'm going to let you penetrate me, I need to be able to outsmart you, check some balances, you know? like It's one of the principles upon which this great nation is based, good enough for our founding fathers, good enough for my vagina, that's what I say. So, here's the thing, I joined online dating. If anybody's familiar with Tinder, it's a very free dating application that you can have on your smartphone. I was on it for long enough to get these jokes and I immediately deleted it. So uh, I got a message that was one line. The one line of that message read, I bet you got some big dumbass nipples. And I'm like, whoa! Cause like now I'm at my house by myself covering my boobs up. Like how did we get to this point? Don't online date, you guys are past it, I can tell. You just have the wisdom of the years on your side, okay. This is a joke for the youths on the left. Uh, <laughs> they're like, I understand, I'm also a millennial. I don't have any money and I'm a single. I get y'all. Uh, I actually have a boyfriend and he hates all these jokes. So, <laughs> so I like guys who are hot and dumb, but I'm, I'm an idiot myself. Like, I think I'm an intelligent person, but I'm only interested in stupid things. I'm of no use to society. So my favorite thing to do is to smoke weed and watch science fiction movies at the very same time. So I did that one day, uh, I'm at my house, I turn on my TV guide and I see a couple channels down in the title box, uh, there's a movie on and the title of the movie is Yo Robot. And I'm super high, I smoke some sativa, thinking man's marijuana, you know. And uh, you know, I had a lot of thoughts and ideas, felt extremely creative and smart. So I see Yo Robot is on and I'm like, this is gonna be amazing. Post-apocalyptic, dystopian, like Hunger Games type future, you know. Dirty teenagers being forced into categories, oppressed by the system. Yo, robot, protect me. Like, sepia tones, all that. So I turn to Yo, robot, super ready to watch this movie, so excited. And Yo, robot uh, turns out to be I, robot in Spanish. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Like, Will Smith and everything, it's the same movie, top to bottom, you know? And it's just like, who could have seen that coming? That's, you know, not I, not Yo, not. <laughs> Not Rebecca O'Neill, but do you guys think I watched the whole thing? <laughs> See, yes I did. You guys have been amazing. I've been Rebecca, goodbye. Rebecca O'Neill, don't you leave that stage. Come here, come on, no, no, Rebecca. Come, Rebecca, you come back here right now and you take a bow because I want these people to worship you. To worship you. That... I know, I know you are. But that was a great set. Thank you so much. I know. Take this microphone. I want to ask you a favor. Absolutely. Since you revealed during your set that you had recently dated a Jewish man. Yes. I did reveal that. Watch your head, Ben. Um, I, uh, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind playing a game okay. with me uh, sure. about Judaism. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play. I mean, I would, I would spend some time asking you questions about your life. Hello, but I feel hello. Like it's about to get real, okay? Oh, my. <laughs> we didn't really run this by The first rule of comedy is yes and, so I'll go wherever All right, you yes and. Me. Thank yeah. you, ladies and gentlemen. Rebecca O'Neill, she's yes anding. Yes. So, oh, my God, speaking of Jews, it's my <laughs> boss in a Catholic schoolgirl costume. Fun. Hi, Jenny. Jennifer, how are you? Okay, you probably had a rough week. <laughs> I mean, just judging from the uniform. Um, you know how it is. It's, it's been rough on, on you kids lately. I mean, right? Back to school. I mean, school. you know, it's difficult for me not to think about. Um, anyway, listen, who's that with you there? Keegan. That's your friend Keegan. All right, great. Hey, so Keegan. you guys are here. Come here, Rebecca. Don't okay. be afraid. You see these tape lines? We put them down here. So this is my mark? My That's yeah. your mark right there. So here's how this is going to work. Because we are uh, upon the Jewish New Year, we are playing one of our patented games. And if you want to play some uplifting music <laughs> to keep this segment going, that'd be great. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. So here's what's going to happen. What's happening? We are going to play, and this is good because yeah, yeah. you're new to town too, 100%. relatively speaking. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, and. 
So we're going to play a game about famous Jews. Okay. All right? And what we need are two uh, teammates, one for me and one for Rebecca. Do we have any volunteers? Ooh, yeah. This side of the room seems underrepresented, so I want to come over here. All right, this tall guy here, why don't you... Clap it up for this young man. You're going to be oh. Rebecca's partner? Right there. No, now we need to get well, a lady. I need a, a female persuasion And now we're person. bonded for life. <laughs> oh, come on. We have a hand up in the air. Come on. I'm not going to lie. You look pretty waspy, but okay. You are, right? Honorary. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I can tell. Thanks. I went to school in Connecticut. I've seen your type. All right. So you stand. See that right there? Now stand there and face me. And then you, uh, tall guy, hey, nipples, sit, stand right there. All right, no, I'm back so up, sorry. back up. I'm you so see the sorry. little, god damn it, the tape thing. There we go, yeah. All right, so, what's your name? Jan. Jan, right? And you what's your name? You couldn't write this stuff, you nipples? couldn't make it up. Her name is Jan, she's from Connecticut, oh, and she's NJ, as my mother used to say. All right, so do we have a blindfold for Jan, too? Jan, do you mind being blindfolded? All right, so basically, this is how this game works. We are going to, uh, it's sort of like a like $10,000 pyramid, only with Jews. So what's okay. going to happen is you are going to get five clues. Okay. And you are going to say to your partner there, that tall shaggy dude. Mm -hmm. clues, His name is Dan. Dan. Okay, <laughs> this guy Dan, about uh, who these people are. We okay. Can sh there are five people in your category. There will be five people in my category. All right, stop. Yes, password. Stop the music. Okay, Dan. Because I'm if I don't you. understand the game, the audience doesn't understand the game. And I think the game goes like this. Each of you, Jan and Dan. Oh my god, Jan and Dan. It rhymes. Yay. Yay. There's so much whimsy here tonight. Shaggy That's what I like. Baby. Um, <laughs> we are each gonna give each of our partners five clues, right? It's been I mean, you know, like we're gonna to try to clue you into who these five people are. You have one minute to get as many of those five as you possibly can, and then we're gonna switch categories, all Great. right? So for you, I think the names will be up there or on the okay. other monitors, and I'll go first, uh, uh, Rebecca, so you have some sense of what we're supposed to do. Love so that. So Jan, I am speaking to you now. Are you ready? <laughs> we're gonna start the clock, and I'm gonna shout things at you, and your job is to shout back at me the names of the people I'm talking about. God, why are these games always so hard? They're right. your I idea. They got it. You guys got it? Clap if you got it. Don't come for me. All right, here we go. Jan, on your mark, here comes the, your first famous Jew. Okay, he's a member of a band called Maroon 5. He's hot as... He's tall and skinny. Oh, he's not that good looking. He's very good looking. He has a thick head of hair. He's younger than I am. No, y yes. <laughs> he's much younger than you are. He's younger than all of us. Uh, he's on a, a show called The Voice right now. Um, his first name is the name of the person who was originally in the Garden of Eden. Say that much. There were two people in the Garden of Eden. Who was the, who was the guy? Not a clue. Anything younger than... Uh, the Beatles, Garden of Eden. Who was in the Garden of Eden? Uh, 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 Adam. There you go. That's the first name. The second name um, is like the name of the conductor at the Met who was Me Too'd and thrown out on his ass because he abused young boys on Long Island. Oh, uh, he's a conductor, really good. Um, I don't feel safe. <laughs> you don't feel safe. Maida? Maida, no. nice guess, I though, said a Jan. joke? Nice what am I saying? Oh, can I pass? I don't think I can <laughs> I pass. I think you can okay. pass. Pass. Adam, Adam Sandler's a very good guess. Let's go with Adam Sandler. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> get, oh, that was a minute. Congratulations, Jan. We didn't get one. All right. All right, don't move. Do we alternate? We alternate? Now it's your turn. Okay. All, All right, right, you're going to win. Don't move, I don't Stay know. Right we'll see. I do Come on, Shaggy. You can do this. Okay. He's All right, Jewish? here we go. I didn't know that either. <laughs> okay, one clue. Me and Dan are going to nail this in one clue. Harry Potter. Uh, Professor Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a nerd. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> The actor who plays... Oh, Daniel Radcliffe. Ah, no, they okay. got one. He's Jewish? Yeah, I didn't know that either. I know, that's what I said. You get to learn oh, some... I oh, yeah. yeah, I think oh that's God, all you. It's all you, Julie. No, you do. I already have my chance. Go. Oh, oh yeah, you keep going. You don't know who oh, this my, is, I have no you? clue. Tell me. Yes, I'll do it. Move, move, move. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Patty LuPone. No, no, the guy who wrote it. Hi, oh, uh, Cohen. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good job. Letter. They're very good. He got it. He is not Jewish. He is. Yes, he is. Not Jewish. He's, he's Jewish. <laughs> I think on the mother's side that counts, right? Go ahead. There we go. Tell All him. right. Um, Aubrey Graham. Degrassi. Degrassi oh, High. Rappers with emotions. <laughs> Um, nice, Kiki, nice. do Macklemore. you love me? <laughs> Why don't know? Right. Half Jewish, half black. A male duck. Uh, oh, a male duck. That's oh, great. Drake. There we go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. Up. Incredible. Time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Oh, my Thanks God. Thanks for the assist. Jan, don't worry. We're not done. A male duck. I can't believe that's what got, no, that's okay. what got it. Who said a male duck? All right, so Thank what is you. the score? What is the score? I think zero to zero. No, no, no. No, he's got three. Oh, oh I'm so... Got three? Yeah. Wow. But I helped, so I'm taking one of those. Yeah, you can... All right, two to one, two to one. All right, now, Jan. I got you one. Don't, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. A gentile reminder. Don't look at your first name. Okay. So, Jan, don't speak. Don't speak. Just listen for a second. This next round is people you thought were Jewish but aren't. Okay? Sure, sure. Are you following me? We, I, I, I'm with you. Good. Okay. <laughs> don't leave me. Ooh, your hands are cold now. Always. Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, so, so I'm going to, oh, God, this isn't going to go well. All right, Jan, I'm going to tell you some names of people you thought were, I'm going to, you know, describe people, and you have to tell me. We all thought they were Jews, but in fact, they are not. On your mark, get set, go. Oh, my God, he's the boss. The boss. The greatest guitar rock and roller oh, of all time. Oh, uh, Springsteen. Yeah, we got a point. Okay. He was the producer and star of MASH, the TV show. Oh, my God, I thought he was Jewish. Mash, mash. Yeah, I know. I know. Mash. <laughs> Come on, a scientific American dude. He's like super like 70s feminist guy. The guy from the Bronx? Guy. No, no, he was he was the star. He's a friend of Tell Ms. Me, magazine. Somebody half my age. Uh, <laughs> I can't pass. He's the biggest star of all time. Okay. Uh, he's very rich. <laughs> what? No, he's close. Did you ever watch the TV show Mash? No. <laughs> I'm talking to you. What do you think, to Dan? Half my age. Am I it's not an age thing, Jan. I won't have you doing that to yourself. <laughs> I never watched that. I don't want you coming at yourself that way. It's not about age. You were busy doing important things. The rest of us were watching TV. You were saving the world, I'm sure. Let's pass to the next one. Give me a break. Pass, pass. Oh my God. Okay, he's not Jewish, but he was the biggest silent movie star of all time. Picture him with a cane going. Oh, Charlie Chaplin. There you go. We're taking it. We're taking it. We want it. Who thought Charlie Chaplin was, was Jewish? Jewish? I don't know. Don't go anywhere, Jen. I know. I don't know why either. Listen, I didn't approve all these. Rebecca O'Neill. Hello. Please uh, face your opponent, yes. Dan, and you're going to do what I just did, Team only me. not like that. Sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. All not right. Jewish, but we thought he was. Go. Okay. Okay, um, Beetle, but the one you forget a lot. Oh. Sorry, yeah, he got it though. He knew what I was talking about. So was I wrong? Uh, oh, okay. Super rich. Um, evil. Evil, corrupt. <laughs> Thanks for the, yeah. Um, a real person? Not real, Darth Vader, but. Not fictional. <laughs> Elon Musk. Close. Um, also, also a white dude. This is not narrowing it down. Um, <laughs> old, old. God is evil and old. Yeah, no, he's old, not Musk, because Musk is a, sort of a millennial. Donald Trump. No. No. Australian. No, no, Australian. Australian. Oh, Herbert. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm like, what are these? Cl oh, okay. Really? Did we think that? Um, special counsel. It's the special conceivable. Counsel. Robert Mueller. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have that. Okay. Um, oh, what's oh, that movie called? Cross stone. Your Legs, Can You See the Badge? Do you know who Oh, movie? Sharon Stone. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Two words. Same last name as the first, as the last. Uh, Sherhan Sherhan. Oh, time's up. Oh. <laughs> he nailed it, though. Good job, Dan. Wow. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. It's not Sherhan Sherhan. He was making that up. All right. 
No, no, you oh, got one show. more round. Yeah. The show, month after month, continues All right. to amaze. Even me. No, it's this We is got great. one more. Okay. One Final more round. I'm ready. Final ready round. Loose. These points are worth twice as much. We call this category Bad News Jews. All right? <laughs> You'll recognize this if you were raised in the Jewish church. There's something we called Jewish Bad Church. for the Jews. You ever heard of that? Every community has got them. Yeah, right, we got yeah, some yeah. of these. These are some of ours. Jan, do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. These are the bad Jews. You ready? You with me? Mm-hmm. Don't worry, it's not an age thing. <laughs> All right, on your mark, set, go. Oh my God, he's the son-in-law of the president. Oh, Jared Kushner. Yes, the worst. Okay, he is yes, the, the worst. Uh, he is the star of uh, Angels in America. His super lawyer, horrible man in the fifties. He worked for oh, McCarthy. Cohen. Yes. Cohen. Yeah. Get it close Roy, to Roy. Roy. Yes. Okay. Another similar sounding name. He's the current lawyer of the president who just flipped. Cohen. Yes. Roy very Cohen. good. I love you, Jan. Okay. She is the daughter of the president. <laughs> Ivanka Trump. Yeah. She is thrice blessed because she converted. <laughs> oh, this guy, me too to everyone. He's a movie maker. He's a big fat fuck. Wait, Weinstein. Yes, go ahead. Say it. Weinstein. Say it. Yes, very good. You got all five, Jan! Woo! You can take off your blindfold now. Yes, yes. No pressure, no pressure. Nicely done, Jan. Right. Thank you. Stay with me while wow. we watch these people. All right, Dan, you ready? Yeah. I'm, I'm not, but let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, this guy was. He's political. He did something. Um, <laughs> Richard Nixon? No. No. He definitely. Donald like, Trump? Secretary of State. Secretary of State for, oh, for Nixon. Secretary of State. Oh, Kissinger. Okay, great. Love that. <laughs> oh, my God. He's in the White House. He sort of seems like a vampire. He was. Um, he, um. He's awful. Pence? It could be um, all of them. Um, he's Jewish. Um, he's Jewish. He's, he's he's Jewish, but his uncle wrote a thing like, "We don't approve of what you're doing." Oh, Jerry Kushner? No. No, no the other one. Yeah, oh, he, Richard Spencer? No. no. Wow, this is not there's so many. Down. Um, okay. Sound what it is, out. Sound it out. Okay. Um, <laughs> like a like you, his last name is synonymous with grinding up grains and stuff. Miller. Oh, Stephen Miller. There, there we go. go. Nice, there nice, go. nice. Okay, this guy is. He was protested at a bunch of colleges because he sucks. Richard he, Spencer? Where, well, he's not Milo a Milo Yannick. Yes, okay. Uh, is he Jewish? Uh, oh, uh, we're out that? of time. Okay, yeah. Oh, we're, we're out, out of time? time? I don't know who that oh, is. Oh, okay. we're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. That is three <laughs> difficult <laughs> rounds of... Yeah. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> disturbed Jan. that the best round was bad juice. Yeah, I don't know. I know. I know. <laughs> like, what websites are you guys reading? Like, Everybody loves a villain. So, yeah, what do we? Ha- what wow. prizes do we have for these beautiful contestants? Oh, I don't know. I feel like they should both. Because get I feel something. Jan has been traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, you did great. You were wonderful. Clap it up for Jan, everybody. Right. Jan, everybody. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you know it? Yet another. Jan, thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure. Yeah. All right. Rebecca O'Neill, what a good sport. We are going to take a brief pause to reset. During this break, however, I want you to do a couple of things for me. Actually, three. A, listen to this fabulous band as they play songs of uh, heartbreak uh, from the shtetl. Uh, Number two, visit the bar and buy drinks. I don't see Tiffany there, but I think she's there somewhere. And please tip her generously. And number three, please social network us. Take this time to take a photograph, to use a hashtag. They're all up on the screen. We need all the support we can get in the world of audience members, so share the love of your having a good time. Let me turn the stage over for the next few minutes to the wonderful Cody Owen Stein and the... 44 Charltones.
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Cody Owenstein, Leon Boykins, and Ben Ahrens, the 44 Charltones. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing us a month after laborious month. We're going to open the second act with something very special. Once again, uh, one of the great pleasures of doing this show is seeing some talent I've never seen before, such as our last act, the delightful and beautiful and very funny Rebecca O'Neill. <laughs> this next act, however, uh, is comprised of some people I do know, I have met, I have spent some time working with, and so it's always a pleasure to share uh, the likes of these people with the likes of you. So, this uh, next duo are part of a company called Witness Relocation. They are a dance and performance collective. They have performed everywhere from the Théâtre de Chaillot, which is the National Theatre of Paris, to the back room of the Pyramid Club. No joke. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together loudly for Witness Relocation. somewhere away from home often allows you to leave your troubles behind. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about the amenities that we have here. Like I said, we've got the full kitchen. The couch does pull out into a full bed. And <laughs> on a 
Honestly, I know you're not planning on having guests, but you'd be surprised how many people who are having insomnia problems uh, will open up the second bed just to try another bed, as comfortable as our beds are. Um, again, people who have difficulty sleeping, as I'm sure you know, will try almost anything. So sometimes just moving to another bed, um, our pullout beds are very comfortable. They are firmer than the large beds. So if you prefer a firm bed, um, then I might recommend sleeping on the pullout in the couch instead. Now you like a little bit softer. Okay. Well then the bed that we have here should be very comfortable for you. We do have a full pillow menu. So if you'd like a buckwheat pillow or a feather down pillow or a foam pillow or a Tempur-Pedic pillow, anything you want. Um, we have many guests who will say bring them all and then you can pick once you've had different options. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have several different options on your bed as well, so if those don't work for you, we can definitely get you some others. The amenities we have here are really lovely. Um, they're all made with citrus sage, which is a, a very relaxing scent. Oh, are you comfortable? Okay, good. Um, it's a very fresh and clean formula. It's, uh, they're eco-friendly products. And we use them, again, the sage is relaxing, but the citrus is also invigorating after a uh, good night's sleep, uh, which we want everyone to have. We like to have something to wake you up a little bit. Um, our body lotion is a tea tree lotion by Paul Mitchell. It's energizing. I'm not going to have you smell it right now, but it does smell wonderful. The reason I'm not going to have you smell it is because we don't want you energized at the moment. We want you winding down with your relaxing tea. And I know it's light out, but it will be dark enough soon. And from my understanding, you are ready to sleep whenever we can get you to sleep. Is that right? Okay. Well, one of the things that we need to do is we have your paperwork down here. We have almost all of your information. So all we really need is to have you sign. And just initial over here. Okay, um, we have your credit card on file, but if you'd like to change that upon checkout, um, you're welcome to. We do do fast checkout, so as long as we're keeping everything on your uh, credit card, all you need to do is leave your keys in the room, and you won't need anything else. Okay. So... Have you thought about what you would like me to read to you this evening? Well, we have a few different options. If you brought your own book, we can read that. We have books and magazines in our library. But honestly, what I recommend most is reading the Wear magazine. <laughs> which is what you will find in any hotel room about what's going on in the area. And I know you're a local, but it's a bit of a drive for you. You're, you're not in DC every day. So um, this has what's going on in the area right now. And um, it's not riveting. <laughs> Uh, that's the one problem with stories. If they're good stories, they may be um, a bit too exciting for you to fall asleep. So, if you want, I can start off by reading this. And 
you can finish your tea and then when you're done with your tea you can go and get changed um, get ready for bed and then I will sit while you try to fall asleep and I'll continue to read um, either this magazine if you find that's working for you or uh, we can read something else okay so let me start here let's see what's going on the winter's tale is playing um, William Shakespeare uh, these are at the set the Shakespeare theater we're having passport DC so 70 of the embassies will be open during a month-long citywide salute to cultural awareness the around the world embassy tour is on May 4th and the EU Embassy's open house is on May 11th. Uh, we, they offer entertainment and cuisine unique to each country. At the Australian Embassy, diplomats prevent, present live Aussie animals and Vegemite samples, while France and Germany toast 50 years of friendship with a dual jamboree. Uh, on May 18th, there will be Fiesta Asia. There'll be a Chinese dragon on Pennsylvania Avenue. There'll be a large street fair, um, talent competitions, a fortune cookie writing contest. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's always fun. So again, this weekend um, is in bloom so it's obviously cherry blossom season and at the National Cathedral Flower Mart um, and the National Arboretum's Potomac Bonsai Festival That's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, witness relocation! Yes. Come over here. Join me, my beautiful friends. Come on over here, and, and while while Cody Owen style uh, Owen Stein tickles the ivories for us, I would like to offer each of you a cold, teeny tiny bottle of water. Have a sit. Yeah, no, no, no. You, you sit. You sit. Grab a microphone while we have a little chit chat. Um, you take the green one. And we're all in suits. Lots of suits. Yeah, lots. So many suits, and you take that one. Lots of suits sit over here. You guys, I don't even know what to say. I feel like this is the third time I've seen <laughs> some iteration of this piece. Yeah. And it every time it blows my mind. It's so beautiful. Thank you Thank so you. much for doing it. Um, do you all agree with me in that regard? It's a... Is this, is this on? on? Is it on? Yeah, yeah. now it's on. It's a 40-minuter, so that's just the first, like, 10. Oh, nine, it's just 10, so yeah. weird and beautiful. And it puts me into a very strange state of mind. Um, watching and listening at the same time is very uncanny. How did you come up with it? Just give me a, a sense of what, of what your process is and speak into the mic. Uh, I'll start and then you take over. Um, it, it w there was an interest in uh, what happens in hotel rooms, which are like a space that is completely yours, but it, you have no responsibility for, and like what people do in those rooms. And then also an interest in the ASMR voiceover stuff. Uh, a friend of mine had shown me um, unboxing videos where people mm. will send packages to people and then they'll open them up on, on YouTube and like talk like this and they rattle their fingers. And they, they the do box. things like. Yeah. That's and it stimulates a part of the brain, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. I remember having that sensation as a kid. Yeah, when certain grown-ups spoke as a, as a Jewish child, let's keep bringing that joke back. Yeah. I yeah. didn't bring it yeah. back. You no, did, no, and I it did. wasn't I funny. Did. Yeah, but no. no, but that's but that's <laughs> true. Like I remember like being very comforted by hearing uh, voices of people who I felt protected by mm -hmm. downstairs when I was falling asleep as a child. Yeah. So it's it's thing. It, I think that that's where that kind of 
ASMR stuff comes from. And though I will say that I'm sure that there's some like weird sexual. Oh, I oh, was God forbid. No, 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 no. I was don't research- speak of it. Well, no, I I wanted to try because I, I was researching tons of the ASMR for this piece and listening to tons and tons of it. And I tried to find ones that were like adult content. And I began to listen to one, and it was all really like. We'll get you relaxed, get into your head, and then begin saying horrible, abusive things oh, to you. No, so I no, turned no. it off immediately. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's yeah. Uh, let's skip to the next yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah. Next topic. By the way, I feel like I failed to introduce you to as individuals. You are oh, Dan Safer, Dan Safer, artistic director of of Witness Relocation. Yes. And you are A. Andress, who is leading performer uh, within the ranks of that same organization. Am I yeah. right? Yes, A. Andreas. Yes. A. Andreas. And tell me, when are you? When when do we get to see this thing in its full? We're doing uh, 40 minutes of what we have at the Prelude Festival on October 5th, uh, I think at 8 p.m. And that will have, um, that's not on there, yeah. Oh, and also that, at, it's not at witness underscore dot org. It's just at wit relo. At wit relo. We got yeah. it wrong, ladies and gentlemen. That's okay. We that's are okay. WNYC. Witness relocation dot org is our wrong. website. Um, October 5th, we're doing, we're doing what we have, but this piece will eventually have... Um, an original score by Heather Christian, uh, mm. but she's not uh, composing it until December. Uh, and then Jeremy O'Harris is rewriting the ASMR text and will re-record it, but it's, it's going to be drawn from what we have. The playwright Jim, Jeremy O'Harris yeah. is going to re-record yeah, yeah, yeah. the ASMR. No, no, he's going to rewrite it, and then we're going to find someone Good grief, with a similar people. voice. Everything is so complicated. Yeah, yeah. Can't you just like show up for dinner? Like, like well, we did person? here, and you, because you're such a gracious host. I love so you guys so much. I really feel like what you're doing reminds me of the New York that I came to uh, a thousand years ago, uh, and maybe that's because you did, I too. did too. <laughs> but I feel like there's a there's a, a an urgency and a, a, a kind of idiosyncraticness, a super um, personal thing going on here that's that's increasingly rare. And I'm so delighted to see it, and I'm so thankful that you came and shared it with us. This is uh, Dan Safer and A. Andrus of Witness Relocation. Thank you both so much Thank for sharing Thank you so much for having us. us. We will find you online. And if you'll permit me to stand on the stage yes. next to you, I don't want to block your light, but I do want to no, no. introduce our next act, who will close out the show for us. Uh, here's another person I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to uh, perform with once in a while from time to time and I could think of no one better to share the opening of our third season with. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the ingenious and delightful Nellie Mackay. And I believe Cody's going to join us as well. Oh, good. Did you speak to him about that? Uh, well, we spoke earlier. Oh, good. Well, then I imagine he knows what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, here we go. You can turn me back on. They turn me off when I go in the back, no oh. matter what's happening. I oh, see. beautiful. Oh. Mwah. Thank you so much for joining us here on, oh, on our, the uh, auspicious launch of our third season. You'll for, forgive me if I just... This looks like what you wanted me to do, right? Uh, oh, that looks great. Yeah, sh should I look at it closer? No, no, those are your... You wrote this song, Nellie. <gasps> those are great. Yeah, I put... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what's going to happen is I'm just going to stand out of your way, oh. and then when it comes time to read the bold print, I'll do that. All right, excellent. Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Nellie Mackay. I love me an old-fashioned bodega From the seasides and mountains pouring down Through Cairo, Caracas y Cartagena to the old-fashioned soul, passion town When love comes around and he asks me 
When will you be mine? I saw my valentine proposed to me in a bodega When romance has won and he asks me What home shall we have? I laugh my better half just build it inside a bodega Bodega I love me an old fashioned bodega where the fruits and the flowers stay the strain school children come eager to buy their ortegas <laughs> for as goes the bodega goes the life Passado de moda Vidrio a prueba de baias De negro Boletos, patatas y soda En el templo de la gente no callas When storm clouds appear and he tells me The landlords are loose I yell my grand Caius fight with me to save the bodegas When justice has won Si se puede The demons have lost their demands I sigh my darling lamb Make love to me in our bodega Bodega I love me An old fashioned bodega Pretty lights through the darkened paths of Rome Lead the crippled, the broken, and even the beggar To their old-fashioned, soul-passioned home Take me home Take me home Ole! Bodega! Thank you so much. If I may say just quickly, you know, you sent me these lyrics yourself, and then there are sections that say foreign content. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. <laughs> More from Nellie Mackay. Fabuloso. Um, Willow, weep for me. Willow, weep for me. Bend your branches green along the stream that runs to sea. Sad as I can be, hear me, willow, and weep for me. Gone, my lover's dream, lovely summer dream. Gone and left me here to weep my tears into the stream. Sad as I can be Hear me, willow, and weep for me Whisper to the wind And say that love is sin To leave my heart a-sighing And crying alone Murmur to the night To hide her starry light 
So none may see me shaking and making up a moan Weeping willow tree Weeping sympathy Bend your branches down along the ground and cover me When the shadows fall Bend, O oh willow, and weep for me Willow, weep for me Willow, weep for me Bend your branches green along the stream that runs to sea Listen to my plea Listen, willow, and weep for me Gone, my lover's dream Loveless summer dream Gone and left me here to weep my tears into the stream Sad as I can be Hear me willow and weep for me Whisper to the wind, say that love is sent Leave my heart aside and cry alone Murmur to the night to hide her starry light So none may see me shaking and making up this moan Weeping willow tree, weeping sympathy Bend your branches down along the ground and cover me When the shadows fall, bend a willow and weep for me Oh willow, I love you Oh rapper, willow, weep for me Do you 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 Thank you very much. And we started this set with Bodega. And many of you, if you live in New York, you may know about this, you may not. But there's a great bill up now called the Small Business Job Survival Act. And uh, it's really great. So check it out. Uh, and there are also you know, lots of great tenant activity for your own home. But if you feel displaced when your favorite store and your little mom and pop goes away, there's really no need. There's lots of great things. Uh, you can have better zoning laws for chain stores and a vacancy tax. I could talk all night, but <laughs> this is um, uh, uh, um, but the S uh, SBJSA is is really excellent, and uh, yeah, I'm sure whoever supposed is supposed to work for you um, is it, supposed to be representative knows about it. Uh, so they might just need a little prodding because you're up against a tsunami of money as usual. Um, but this song. Uh, maybe the greatest protest song ever written. It's about radical non-participation. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy bones sleeping in the sun. How you expect to get your day's work done? Never get your day's work done. Sleeping in the noonday sun. Lazy Loafing through the day How you expect to get your cornmeal made Never get your cornmeal made Sleeping in the noonday shade When taters need spraying I bet you keep praying The bugs fall off of the vine and when you go fishing, I bet you keep wishing those fish don't grab at your line. Lazy bones loafing through the day. How you expect to make a dime that way? Never make a dime that way. Never hear a word I say.
bet you keep praying the bugs fall off of the vine. And when you go fishing, I bet you keep wishing those fish don't grab at your line. Lazy bones loafing through the day. How you expect to make a dime that way? Never make a dime that way. Well, looky here, never hear a word I say. Thank you, Julian. I had one more, but are we out of time? No, we're not. I'm oh, not we're not? No, not at all. I just wanted to come spend another minute with you close up. Oh, this is so nice. Well, I, I, you know, I take my contacts out, so I can't, you, you know. You have no idea. See anybody, but I could see you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. Stop laughing. You're fired. Get out. No, I just want to say, you know, I was sitting there listening just in the chamber of chat and thinking <laughs> very few people can cast a magical spell the way that you do. And I feel very lucky to have you here tonight. And I know our audience must feel similarly. Oh. <laughs> I've, you know, I've always felt this way about you and I always feel uh, uh, privileged to get to spend some time with you. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that you have recently put out a new recording. Am I correct or it's coming up soon? 
Oh, um, I... This is your plugging opportunity, just to make sure that we take advantage of your time here. Of course, of course. Yes, uh, we have a record out now. We do. It's called... Um, uh, God, it's so difficult, isn't it's it? It's called Sister Orchid. And Sister Orchid, beautiful. Yes. What's the... Uh, <laughs> Is there a, 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 th a general guiding principle? Well, there's a film called Brother Orchid um, starring Edward G. Robinson, Humphrey Bogart, um, uh, uh, Donald Crisp, Ralph Bellamy. I believe it's Anne Southern. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't yes. Want to say I, the wrong person. Yes, it is. Yes. And I have so no idea what you're, you're talking you're about. <laughs> But I'm sure it's You're a fabulous appropriate. film. It's wonderful. It's a gangster redemption picture. It's really wonderful. <laughs> and so you have done the distaff version, am I correct? Um, By oh. calling it Sister Orchid? Oh, uh, yes. Um, uh, Shall I just leave you alone? No, I'm, I'm going so to leave you sorry. alone. I'm sorry. No, I'm this was so completely, I, I totally <laughs> broadsided you. I just walked up on stage in the middle of your set, <laughs> decided to spend some time chatting, and I have completely... But just can you just say the question one more time? I'm so sorry. No, you don't know wh where I I'm going. I owe you the apology. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This will be cut out of the final product. <laughs> 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 I guarantee you, no one will ever know this moment ever <laughs> happened. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> I'm men in black style, flashing your memories. It's gone. <laughs> I'm going to leave the stage and let you do one more song. But I want to make sure that you stick around for our final sing-along. Oh, your sweetheart, It I'd will love happen to. seconds after you finish your last song. But I want everybody to know that you are putting out a record. If they want it, they can hear it. If not, they don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Well, you know, people can take it. I mean, people say, you know, that taking music is like taking a pair of shoes, but it's not the same thing. I mean, music belongs to the people, and, you know, shoes do too. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, it's your name. That's why I kept fogging. I've been, I've been having a lot of dreams about Julian Assange, and um, it, I kept, I kept. No, I think. Uh, yeah. Stop talking. <laughs> if if my dog dies and I don't off myself, I'm gonna fight the CIA too. <laughs> Black cats creep across my path until I'm almost mad I must have heard the devil's wrath Cause all my luck is bad for golf and you can bet your life it rains I try to give a party and the guy upstairs complains I guess I'll go through life just catching colds and missing trains everything happens to me I never miss a thing I've had the measles and the mumps And every time I play an ace My partner always trumps I guess I'm just a fool Who never looks before she jumps Everything happens to me At first I thought that you Could break this jinx for me that love would turn the trick to end despair But now I just can't fool this head that thinks for me I've mortgaged all my castles in the air I telegraphed and phoned I sent an airmail special too your answer was goodbye, and there was even postage due. I fell in love just once, 
And then it had to be with you. Everything happens to me. Step here, please. Thank you so much. How beautiful is that? Huh? Yes! Let me invite the rest of our show to join me back on the stage for one last moment. You know, it's our tradition here. Please uh, stand, if you will, to end every show of 44 Charlton with a sing along. It feels so good to take the hand of your neighbor, whether you know him, her, they, or not and sing at the top of your lungs. So come on out here, don't be shy, you kids. The members of the Love Dub Theater Company, the members of Witness Relocation, Nally McKay, Rebecca O'Neill in spirit, she could not stay. Come on up here. I think you know the words to this song, but if you don't, you'll learn them quick. What would I do? If you sang out of key, would I stand up and walk out on you? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing out. Sing out, Louise. good and beautiful people work super hard to make this show happen for you. They work here, they work upstairs, they come in from out of town once a month, and I'd like to share their names with you right now so that you can know who they are. They are Justine Dom and Nana Job. My director, Eileen, Eileen Delahunte, there she is in the back. Eileen, wave to the people, tell them how much you love them. Cam Tompkins, I don't know where you are, but you there you are behind the glass. Thank you so hard, so much for working so hard. Gaines Laguerre and Ricardo Fernandez on lights and sound. Wave to the people. Come on, come on, Ricardo, wave. There you go. George Wellington on sound. Keegan Zima, my little schoolboy with a backpack. Thank you so much. David McLean, you can't see him. Utsky Otsuka upstairs. She's our benign overlord. Jennifer Centro, my boss, Ali Tanel, helping so much. And that is it for tonight. So sing out one more time while we say goodnight until next month. Please tell your friends about us and come back and see us. Oh, I get by with it. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there you are. We're going to take a class photo.